I'm building a portable solar power supply to use on my boat, so I thought I'd make a quick video showing how it's done. This kind of setup can be used for camping, motorhomes, boats, or if you scale it up, can be used as an alternative power supply for living off the grid. I got all the parts I need from eBay for around $200, and I'll be using an old car battery to store the power from the solar panel. A 40 watt 12 volt solar panel should be all I need to power my fish finder, GPS, lights, radio, water pump and a few 240 volt appliances. If I was running a refrigerator I'd need at least 100 watts. The power inverter converts 12 volt DC from the car battery into 240 volt AC or 110 AC if you live in the states. This one is rated to 1500 watts. It came with these alligator leads to connect directly to the battery, but I'll be adding a 100 amp circuit breaker to give it some overload protection. This is the brain of the system, a 30 amp charge controller. You connect the solar panel and battery to it and it charges the battery to the correct voltage. When the battery is fully charged it will either disconnect from the solar panel or direct excess power to the load output, which you can use to heat water, charge another battery, run a 12 volt appliance or control a 12 volt relay connected to the inverter to run AC appliances. Being 30 amps means I can add more solar panels as needed. The 40 watt panel I have only makes about 3 amps maximum. This is the diode block or add to the positive wire coming from the solar panel. It stops any power leaking back to the panel when the sun goes down. Some panels have this built in already so you don't have to worry about it. And the waterproof plug for when I want to disconnect the solar panel. I'm using an old car battery to store the power from the solar panel and run the inverter. It has a fairly low capacity so I'll upgrade to a deep cycle battery eventually. First of all connect the battery to the controller. Make sure to connect the wires to matching terminals, positive to positive and negative to negative. The controller screen should light up and show the battery status. I've already connected the diode block to the positive wire from the solar panel. It only lets power flow one way so no power is lost at night when the panel isn't charging. If the panel has this built in you won't have to worry about this step. Next I'll add the waterproof plug between the panel and controller. Usually I'd solder and seal all connections but for this demo I'm using terminal blocks. The other end of the lead from the panel is connected to solar input on the controller. Now I'll plug in the solar panel, face it towards the sun and it should start charging. You can see here the solar panel is putting out 1.8 amps, which the controller is feeding into the battery. It's pretty flat so it'll take a wee while to fully charge, and the sun is low on the horizon so output is quite low. In full sun we'd see closer to 3 amps. The good thing about this controller is you can adjust all the parameters by scrolling through with the mode button. So it lets you choose the threshold for when the load comes on when the battery is full, and when it cuts out again and you can adjust when the solar panel stops charging once your selected battery voltage has been reached. I'll use this 12 volt spotlight to demonstrate how the load function works. I've set the load threshold to 14 volts, so when the battery reaches this level the controller sends excess power to the spotlight until voltage drops to 13.5 volts. This prevents the battery from overcharging and lets you use the excess power for other things. You could charge another battery, heat water, control a relay to use AC power from the inverter. Before I connect the inverter to the battery, I'll add a 100 amp circuit breaker to the positive lead. This should cut out before any damage is done to the inverter if it overloads. When connecting the leads to the inverter, make sure they go on the right terminals. Red to positive and black to negative or you'll turn it into a blue smoke generator. You can see when I switch it on it uses some power even with no load. So that's something to be aware of. If you're not using it, switch it off or have the power switch controlled by a relay.
So let's put it to work. I've got a 710 watt drill here. It should only draw a few hundred watts when free running. Handles it with ease. Next up an absorption fridge freezer. Not the most efficient design, they have a little heating element in the back there. Easy. That's probably drawing about 100 watts. Now I'll try the 800 watt toaster. Not a problem. In theory this should squeeze out 1500 watts, but I don't like to push it to its limits. The battery's feeling it, down to about 10.8 volts. That sound you can hear is the fan keeping the electronics cool. So that's all there is to it, how to set up a portable solar power plant. If you're not confident working with high voltages, best to get an electrician to check your work.